Hello lovely people! Today I show you how I get rid of that messy look in ripped jeans. There are just a couple of challenges here, but for the rest this is very easy, even if you have never held a needle before. So grab some tea and let's get creative. First of all, I wanted to create a clean background for my embroidery work. So I gave those holes a nice haircut, removing all those loose threads. If you want to avoid that the hole continues to fray, what you can do is applying some fabric glue. And that is also what I do when I cut long jeans into shorts. Just a little fabric glue on the edges of the cut. So now it's time to get creative. I took a piece of paper and I traced the shape of the holes because I want my embroidery pattern to extend beyond the edges of the holes. For the drawing, I got inspired by the cacti and succulents I see every day on my walks. The flowers are withered now, but I want to remember the first time I saw a flower and a cactus when I moved to California. I was amazed. We knew something so hard and spiky could produce such delicate flowers. To transfer the drawing on the fabric, I used a sheet of embroidery stabilizer. This also ensures that light fabrics don't slip around while embroidering. However, the stabilizer I used was a bit too stiff. It just was all I had at home. In the description below though, I've included a link to a stick and wash away stabilizer that will work a lot better for this type of project. So then I moved on cutting enough tool to cover the holes and their edges. I had glittery tool, which is not really my vibe, but if you love thrifting like I do, you know that sometimes you just gotta work with what you find. Then I got my fabric glue and turned the short inside out. Yep, you need to unscrew the glue cup first, then you can glue the tool. Also, a little tip here, since I learned the hard way. The glue gets hard, making the embroidery process more difficult. So my tip here is to only apply glue a bit farther away from the edge. That way you stay away from the embroidery zone. Then I removed the excess glue with paper and I waited a little bit to let it dry and start embroidering. Once I had everything lined up just right, I assembled my embroidery hoop. And if you don't have an embroidery hoop, no problem. In the description, I'm gonna link a video that shows you how you can make your own with what you have at home. If you're gonna watch it, please watch it after having watched this whole video. Embroidery may sound daunting to some people, but I think there are easy projects and harder projects and that the easy projects are actually very accessible to total beginners. This for example is a very easy one where I used only four types of stitches. The first type of stitch I'm using is the satin stitch, where you simply work rows of stitches right next to each other until the entire area is covered with a smooth layer of thread. For this bunny ear cactus, I believe that's how it's called, I am using two colors and this is just to create a more visually interesting effect, to kind of create a shade on the leaf. So when I am done with the color or if I run out of embroidery floss, then I turn the project and I make two knots around the last stitch. The second stitch is called stem and I'm going to show it in detail later as here I'm getting a little stuck. So sometimes when you are embroidering, it can happen that you pull the thread and you realize that it's not completely coming out. Well, this happens when the thread comes stuck on the other side. So what you have to do is with a little bit of patience, go there and unstuck everything. The stem stitch will come in a little. What you're seeing here is the lazy daisy stitch. To make this, you first leave a loop of thread out and then you bring the needle back up through the fabric where the top of that loop is and you make a small stitch to anchor that loop in place. Just to give it more volume, I also added one stitch inside each of these leaves. But that is not the lazy daisy stitch just to be clear. And every time I'm done with a color, I turn the project around and I tie 
two stitches on the last stitch. Sorry, two knots on the last stitch. <laughs> Now it's time to go back to the stem stitch. This is the one that looks a little bit like a twisted rope. To do this, you start making a regular stitch and then emerging again from midway. Every once in a while I felt the thread stuck, so I went to check regularly, but sometimes it's just the thread being so short. <laughs> For this other cactus, I used a variation of the lazy daisy stitch, where we still have a loop, but the thread doesn't emerge from the same point. You see, this is a lazy daisy stitch and this is the alternative way. And then I went on using a combination of these three stitches I mentioned so far. So the satin stitch, the stem stitch and the lazy daisy stitch. But as I said before, we have four stitches. The last one is the French knot. This one is very fun, but also the one that took me longer to learn. In this case, you hold the thread and wrap it around the needle twice, and then you insert the needle back into the fabric close to where it came up from. And now the much dreaded time of removing the stabilizer has come. Throughout this whole project, I was always in doubt that the stabilizer would be way too thick to be easily removed and I was pretty sure I would be left with some stabilizer coming out of the embroidery work and indeed it was not easy to remove it. I also had to use tweezers. The main risk was that removing the stabilizer I would damage the tool which is a very delicate type of fabric. It was a work of patience but as I said before, if you use the right stabilizer, you will not have this problem. And also if you've noticed this water is a little bit yellow, well, I think it's the glue, just in case you thought my shorts were dirty. <laughs> I don't think so. So after drying, I gave another little bit of tweezing here and there, and then my shorts are ready to be worn. Thank you for watching. My name is Valentina, and this channel is all about mending, upcycling, and refashioning. So I hope you stick around. Till the next time.